wanted to start a track with you guys from scratch, uh, especially uh, using the, the latest version of uh, FL Studio, which has uh, a lot of new features where you can stretch audio real easy and uh, bounce in the playlist itself. Yeah, when I start a track always, I like we arrange all our samples here in the left. As you can see, we have a lot of samples. Don't mind the names though, uh, if you can read them. They're a bit stupid, but that's how I remember where I put all my stuff. So most of the times uh, we use splice I don't know if you know that. We always try to find some new samples, some new kicks, some new snares to, to see if we can bring something special uh, to the table because a lot of stuff is already being used a lot. Let's start with a simple kick drum. That's where I always start with a kick. And I go to my splice folder. So most of the times I start with uh, making like a little drop and then find out how I can make like a little pre-chorus or a chorus in front of it and um, start working in a key, uh, which is mainly F or E or C because that sounds nice in trap music. I just start with a simple bass line. So I start with cutting the sample like this. I don't know if anybody uses FL Studio. This is like my first thing I do with all samples is to cut it in the envelope. So it stops when I want it to stop. Let's remove this one. I always work in, um, in like a pre-mastered kind of setup to, to know how it's gonna sound when I eventually put a master on it. Uh, some people I know just work without a, a master chain. I always start with a little bit of a master chain just to see how it will sound if I push everything up a bit. So um, yeah, I don't know if you have this one but T-Rex is a really nice solution for that. You can all copy this. It's in the presets. It really works really well. It's the master tool of the T-Rex bundle. So I always add an equalizer just to cut off a little bit of the low end, not too much. And I also add a, this little nice compressor on the kick. Let me see, it's diamond diamond, this one. Um, if I do a, like a little trap kind of beat, I always try to make the kick itself a little bit shorter. Uh, so it doesn't have that much of a punch because you have the bass line itself that has a lot of like low end. So you don't need the whole back end of the, of the, of the kick. So I just make it a little bit shorter, a little bit snappier. I don't use the, this thing here uh, a lot. I rather use the playlist 
because it's you can do like more little edits and you don't have all these patterns going on. So for instance, if I want to do like a, a little double kick, I can do it. If you have questions during um, what I'm doing, because I'm, my explaining is not that good, uh, just ask. So if you see something you, you want to check out, just ask me what I'm doing. Hi, my name is Joost, and uh, uh, I saw you using a compressor on a kick. Yeah. And my question is, why do you use that, uh, that compressor? This compressor is uh, really nice. It gives like, a little, like that old school warm kind of vibe you have from like real like the hardware kind of uh, compressors. And what I do is I actually push the gain a little bit up, so it starts to distort a bit, and I push the output gain a little bit down, so it starts to compress like real nice. The nice thing with this thing is, is you can add a frequency range to the part that you want to push a bit. So if you have like a, a kick that, that needs a little bit more sub on the low end, you can push it with this thing real nice. So. Yeah, you can also cut the high end off, so you can really shape shape the way of your 808. For me, it was like one of the biggest, uh, like a real good investment for, for the sound of my tracks. I think you can also use like um, things as the, the sausage fattener, but it's not that precise, if you know what I mean. So you want to distort your kick, but on the other hand, s still keep it like really compact sound-wise. This is a totally uh, different kind of project. Is uh, it something you're working on? Is it uh, this is something okay. we're working on? It's a track we uh, recorded in LA. Bitch, I read the dirty. Uh, yeah, I'm from Houston. Leaning to the side. You know how I do it. Do it. Set this bitch off. Let them all lose it. Dirt caps on the buttons. Don't push them. Push em. Still a little woozy. Sipping on the goosey. Still a fucking nuisance. New ones. Yeah, I bring the new shit. Yeah. Stepping in my new things. I can never Ay. lose shit. Take a step yeah. back. Throw back. Ooh hey I'm so bossy. I take your money. Ooh. They keep... It's actually the same principle I was doing at the other track. So I start out with this bass line. And it's, it's just a simple cashmere, um, cashmere 808 sample. And I combine it with the same kick, I guess, that I was using in the other project. And that's this one. And as you can see, those two together give a little real nice vibe. Um, and there's nothing special I use like on, on, on certain kind of stuff. It's all trying to find the right samples together. So if, if samples don't work with each other like frequency wise or um, uh, harmo harmonically wise, you can, uh, yeah, better, it's better to find another sample than just to try to make it work with all these plugins. So that's how I work most of the times. Always, we start arranging the track with, um, in this case, like a, a verse over here, and then we start out with the, the chorus with a little break, and this is such a simple track, so it doesn't have like a real drop or that kind of stuff. It's just all the way. Fool, I know you seen these shoes. Bragging. Get respect when it's due. I see why you looking. Who, bitch? Burr. Burr. Drip down to the base. Feeling the rhythm. Yeah. Burr. I think there's uh, another question uh, in front. 
My name is Greg. Uh, can you show me uh, how you process the vocals? This was recorded uh, in a studio with um, uh, Avalon uh, compression, so like a hardware one. So actually, um, it's directly recorded without any processing. So I only use a, a little equalizer on it. Mm. Um, maybe I can show a project which has uh, a little bit more processing on everything. This one is maybe cool. This is a remix we did for Paul Siavu, a track we are releasing on our own label. So we're releasing, uh, we, we did a little remix for him on, uh, for our own label. It's coming out real soon. And you can see how we work with that one. So this is a full project with everything on it. So we can go through every channel and how I started it up. you get the, <laughs> the idea. Um, so this is how I typically um, start up my, my track. So this is the kicks. Uh, I cut up a lot of samples. Um, this time I did the kick not in, into the pattern but straight uh, into the, the playlist so I can cut a lot off. As you can see, uh, this is a standard sample I got from Splice and I pitched it down. But I didn't like it that way, and also it wasn't in key, so I pitched it down to this. Uh, what's a real cool feature right now is you can use the stretch function in all samples. So, like back in the days, uh, if you wanted to stretch something, like your whole computer needed to stretch everything separately, but now you can stretch all um, uh, all pitch on all the all the wave files in real time which is an awesome feature I, uh, in the in the new fruity loops also this feature is really cool i don't know if you have the new fruity loops but you can select all your uh, wave files you put into the in, in put into the track and you can also render as audio clip right now. I don't know if you have seen that one, but this one is really, really nice if you use like, uh, for instance, uh, if you want that being rendered, which I do a lot because, for instance, if you use Serum or Contact or that kind of stuff, if you use like 10 or 12, your CPU gets like overloaded at a certain kind of point, and if you want to um, add more effects than usual, you can render it as an audio clip. Uh, I started with this one, this is the original three uh, stems I got, so this is the synths. It's the drums. So I really like that um, the jungly kind of vibe. So we add a lot of drums on the intro.
I always try to find as much as possible on like things or supplies or um, other. Uh, I used to buy like world CDs and cut all the little uh, parts with drums out of it and just layer them on top of each other to get like new new drum rhythms and new drum sounds. And the only thing you need to do is try to pitch them together. So the pitch of the drums itself is really important. Sometimes they don't work with each other. So this one I pitched a bit up. And then if you put them together, I always start working on the equalizing of both these drums to make it to one solid drum loop. <laughs> So that's basically where the whole intro is built up from. You can see I don't use a lot of extra effects to make it sound yeah as direct as possible. So I record a lot uh, after I uh, process it. So for instance, if, if there's a loop or a kick I like, I record it with this function over here, and I put it back into my file and delete all the all the extra effects on it and start working from that again and again and again. Um, the only thing I work a lot on afterwards is the the master. So again, I use T-Rex. I use a transient processor on my master, uh, which is a little bit weird for some people, but it actually makes uh, um, my track sound more direct. So if I, if I think there's too much, like, uh, how do you say it, reverb on all samples, I just put the transient master, master on it. And let me see how I can... <coughs> show you how that w works. You can really um, add detail to, to what's important to the track, so the kicks, the snares, and that kind of stuff. And you can decide if you want like more more space in between being used by the synths or other stuff. So you get a really, um, uh, uh, how do you say it in Dutch? You get a track that's really um, vibrant or really, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> do, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying here? So for instance, if I put this down and I put this up. <laughs> I can, um, it's it's actually a gate compressor. For, so if you want to add more to the, the start of, of your sample, you, you add more attack and you kill down the release a bit. So all the reverb and all the extra stuff that's maybe a bit too much, you can downsize it so your track gets more into your face, if you know what I mean. I use a little bit of excitement for like the little sparkly high-end stuff. Uh, and I use a dynamic compressor to keep everything in line with each other. So it's actually like a multi-band. I just opened another project maybe with a little bit of synthesis. Maybe it's cool if you could show us uh, just a little secret you've been using. Do you have, uh, have, have like, a, like a little signature thing that you could show us? Maybe it's a cool thing to show. Maybe in this project. It's also not out there. So you get all previews of stuff that isn't out there yet. Little sneak preview, it's always good. We've been
been playing this edit a lot. So, uh, yeah, um, signature stuff I'm using. Uh, that's in the for me, it's the T Rex on a master. I use this um, imager to make sure my low end is mono, which is really important for me. Uh, I use this old vintage equalizer just to have that little bit of saturation on the low end it's all with the t-rex i always layer kicks with a lot of other kicks just to start uh, to make it like more special and make it more crunchier if you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> cool. uh, it's always good to get some insight. Are there some more questions? Uh, hi, my name is Zane. Uh, how do you work on your fills when you're like working on a project? What do you think like when you're about to... Your fills? Yeah, the fills. Um, yeah, like for, for instance, the, the, uh, like with the last project, I try to get as much as samples from like drum rhythms and that kind of stuff. And I just cut them up in the in the um, uh, in the playlist. So um, let's see where it is right here. I just, for instance, this is a fill I use. It's not drums in this time, but it's um, it's different different audio samples. Don't put your hands up. So it's like all these different kind of hard cell samples. This time I used uh, the Frontliner pack. Just cut them up, pitch them. So I always, like this kind of stuff, I always do at the end. And this is like a project for half a day. I could just cut up a lot of samples. And I put put it in the playlist. So I never used uh, the pattern uh, part for that. George, my name. I just wanted to ask... Uh, how is it possible in your productions to make them energetic and stand out without having to use way too many samples or way too many tracks going on? Well, I think um, it's really important to see in a track which has like the main role. So, um, uh, for instance, uh, I know that the Skrillex and all these guys always, when, when you send a demo, they always send back, there's some key sounds that's really important and start work, work them out. So. Um, yeah, don't don't try to see what the big subject is. So if your synth is really cool and there's a lot of stuff around it, try to to use that part the most, and uh, don't over comp compress stuff. If it sounds good from itself, why add more compression, add more reverb, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Keep it as dry as possible if it sounds nice on that part. Questions? Well, I have a question. Um, so it was a uh, kind of interesting. What, but what was the last thing that you learned recently? That's a good uh, thing. I always think it sounds a bit too much stereo. Uh, so if I produce, I use the switch button on my um, console from stereo to mono. Uh, and it's really important if if your um, if your main synth is also really. Um, like you can that you can hear it in mono as well because a lot of clubs etc they don't have like a good stereo image. So for instance, if you want to um, make sure your synth also sounds good in um, mono, you can cho choose here from linear to super to exponential. So if you put it on exponential in Serum, it starts in the middle and it spreads out the stereo image 
uh, on another type of scale than normally. So, so what is the uh, what is the effect or the result? The effect is that it sounds better in mono, uh, just as good in mono as it sounds in stereo. So that means over multiple sound systems, be it in a club or yeah. in a car or yeah, on the it, radio. Yeah, it will always sound good better. in mono. Yeah, that's a. I think that's a great tip. Yeah. I think we're nearing the end of the panel as well. Are there still some things you would like to show us or could you maybe give some last pieces of advice or some tricks to our audience? Um, yes, uh, try not to, um, uh, if you use samples, try to make it your own. And if you use pre presets, try to make it your own as well. So if there's a standard sound from, from for instance, Kashmir, which they, these guys have really good like samples or, there's a lot of packs that right now that mimic all the sounds from Skrillex or from other producers. Try to make it your own and don't use the preset as it is. So try to fiddle around with it. Try to add some some different effects, distortion, um, to just to make it sound your own because there's a lot of copying going on and you, you want to be special and stand out. Uh, so that's my tip.